Life's too short to drive boring cars. Welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place, everyone. Thanks for joining in. What do we have here? We have a brand new Jaguar F-Pace. This is the 30T, and this is where the budget allows you to step into these vehicles at a very affordable rate. But did you realize, since Tata Motors came along, and Jaguar now actually creates cars that are actually ready for the mainstream. They're relatively reliable, they're affordable, but they're still luxurious and wonderful to drive. We're gonna talk about the F-Pace 30T today, and hopefully you guys will see the light as well as I did as I recently bought a new F-Type. Let's get into it now. But here, take a look. Here we are, the Jaguar. This is supposed to be a cat, but in recent years, it's gone through so many changes between Ford and Volvo and all kinds of other brands. There's even touches of Aston Martin in there. And as a result, I would call that more Heinz 57. In a sense, there's probably a little Dash Hound in there, probably a little English Terrier and a little Bulldog in there, a little bit of everything. I know it's supposed to be a cat. Sorry, guys, pardon the humor. But in reality, they've gone through a lot of hands and a lot of changes. But that's where it takes us today, and that's the point of it. Jaguar has done some great things in recent years to vastly improve the dependability of their cars. Now, looking around, obviously you see some great styling elements on here. Anytime you see dual exhaust, it gives it certainly a more sporting look to the overall vehicle. And the Jag actually has real exhaust tips. Look, right there, it is the real deal. There's nothing fake going on underneath there. It's actually tied right to the muffler, as opposed to some of the other modern day luxury cars like this, like a Mercedes, for example. Like they're beautifully styled, but look inside. You actually see a separate exhaust tip from this little oval accent piece, entirely isolated from the actual tip, and there is no real tip to the muffler. These tail lights look very similar to the F-Type, which of course is the big granddaddy of Jaguars in modern history now. So it carries that design theme. Now, if you look down here, you'll see, see they have these little mini flares. This is the catch, and I believe regulations require that the brand puts these on here because of the flare to the fenders, and it's there to prevent rocks and whatnot from flying off the vehicle. Look, a lot of great styling cues right here. Beautiful design here, and this brushed aluminum all the way around the window trim. We we'll press this, and you can lock the door. You'll notice it folds in the mirrors, which is nice. Keeps them from getting clipped. Other vehicles driving by. You can hit it a couple times, and then it double locks it. Now you've got your security system engaged as well. To unlock it, you do not need the key. Here's the key, but you do not need this because you can simply, just like that. Now, just by a simple touch, you've got essentially soft touch controls there. Now we move around. As in many recent Jags, the XE has that, as well as the F-Type. You've got this beautiful little design element right here. And we move around and looking at these wheels, so these ones here are wrapped in 20 inch winters right now because I mean, we are in winter here in Alberta, but you can also step up to 22 inch wheels. Now know that, as soon as you do that, because the ride is already somewhat firm, what you'll find is the ride's gonna be a lot more punishing. Right now, 20 inch wheels is a nice blend of comfort and performance. It's slightly wallowy, but they do definitely do the job of holding you in the road. Now we move around, you'll notice we've got LED headlights. That's the Jaguar LED technology, the latest and the greatest. And by a little stroke of the button, we can see the flash. That's the old J for Jag. And then you'll look down here as well. This has a very reminiscent look to the F-Type. So again, it's part of the design theme from the family of Jaguars in modern day. And on the Jag, you have the turbo. It's actually exposed. Instead of some of the manufacturers now are bearing it within, you know, the V of the engine and a V8, or they're tucking it so tight under there that that heat has to stay in there and it cooks the engine. Here, it's a little bit out there and isolated, which I have to believe that's a positive thing. I would expect, hopefully, that you're gonna have less cooking of other engine parts around it because it's kind of sitting on its lonesome right there. And then we look at this wonderful picture of this angry little kitty here, but you'll notice they use this little guard here because rock will take, take its toll on the kitty and you don't want the kitty to wear out and look kind of ugly and mangy, full of pock marks like it had a bad case of acne when it was 17. Instead, you put this guard on there. And of course, you've got the typical big mouth Jaguar grill consistent with all the other cars in the field. Now moving around, what we see on top here is lots of glass, lots of visibility there. So all the passengers get bright light inside the cabin and we'll show you that in a second. And then you have this beautiful overhang. Obviously a lot of SUVs today or sport utility vehicles or crossovers have this very sharp look at the tail end. That's not unique for a Jaguar here, but they're certainly in line with the vast majority of the manufacturers out there. This obviously gives you the sporty overhang prevents a lot of contamination on the back window. And this window is very short, stout, 
but it definitely looks very sporty. Of course, you've got your windshield wiper back there and you've got this soft touch button back there and you can lift it up just like that. Now, as we move inside here, you'll see there's a few different features. Obviously, you've got typical storage there, no big deal. You've got this solid rubber mat, which is great for hauling a lot of dirty, harsh items. For sure, that's gonna do a great job of that. As well, you've got this nice brushed aluminum. We won't peel that off at this time. And then you'll notice these seats, you've got the three different breakaways here. You can throw your skis through the center or you can flop down one side. Maybe you got some hockey gear and you need to push that through there. And it allows you to push a seat down if you need that extra space to push through and consume some of the back seating area. Then you'll notice you've got a 12 volt DC outlet back here, right there. That's handy. You never know if you're running out of, just living out of the trunk area, possibly on a picnic, as well as you can use these to pop the seat down. Pull that and that drops that down just like that. Okay, so first let's take a look in the back seat here. Let's climb on in and we fit snugly. You'll notice you've got little magazine holders here or whatever for your kids. They might have video games parked in there. You've got rear heating controls here. You've also got a your own window control. Pretty basic, not a lot going on back here for the passengers. Other than back here, you'll notice you've got actual independent both sides have their own heating controls here. You can alter the temperature from either the left or the right side in the rear seat compartment. As well, another great feature is if you notice, the buttons on the bottom, you have heated and cooled seats in the back. Now that's not common to a lot of manufacturers. A lot of brands might have heated seats, a lot won't, but definitely to have cooled seats in the back is also a nice little add-on. And then looking across, you'll notice just the overall quality looks very, very nice. We've got colored match stitching right there beautiful look very high quality nice colorful attractive color tones in this particular model but as you look above we actually have enough adequate lighting up here as well for the rear passengers so there's lots of light in here that's that large sunroof the panoramic that i mentioned before so it gives you huge amounts of light now with the light leather interior and the sunroof on top this is just a glorious place to be you've also got this little control this just alters the seat backs there allows you to move the seat forward and back. And you've got these little headrests that just push just like that. Pull that down and you've got your cup holders right there in the middle. Slam that back. All right, so let's get in and see what other amenities we have in the front of the vehicle here. So go down here for starters. You'll notice the seats have multiple controls right here. That's your seat back. You have your knee support right here and you have your overall sliding controls right here. Also heated and cooled, it's just a beautiful place to be. Cool little cubby holder there for your personal massager or wallet or whatever. Let's get in. You'll notice the overall feeling is very cocoon-like, very much like the XE, which I test drove previous. It has this higher bank wrapping around here on the door console. It just flows nicely to the dash. Up here you have all your window controls. Down here, you actually have your memory controls for your seats. You've got your lock and unlock the doors. Then as we move around, you'll notice the vehicle has heads up display. And this 2021 actually has some updates. For one, you've got the digital display. Now this is fairly new. The older variation had the analog gauges. This is standard mode here, but it's all digital display, which is nice. Some people love it, some don't. You can toggle your different modes. We're in snow mode right now. Toggle this over and then you're into eco mode. And then you can also standard driving mode, default, and dynamic mode. Gets you the red display just to show that it's a little bit special. We've got this basic console right here. You've got a DC source right there. Close that up. You've got your park brake, emergency park, and you've got your cup holders buried behind this nice high gloss finished console. Now again, as we wrap around, we've got all this high piano gloss. And when you turn on the button for power, this will pop up. Let's start the vehicle and you'll see that rise. Then what we go across here, the problem here is that I'm not in love with is to activate the heating controls, you have to press that, then it gives it to you on here. Then you go either here, driver's side, yeah, we'll turn that down or turn it up and passenger side, we can toggle that. So we can turn these back off because we don't need heat right now. And then you can select any one of your other modes. You've got navigation, you can make your hands-free phone calls. You've got your music controls here. You have a few different options for that. Now the controls in general, I would say are very high quality. The touch feels very, very nice. They feel like they'll last a long time. And overall, the ambiance is very high quality. So down here, you have your telescopic and tilt right there. And here is your standard controls. You've got paddle shifters behind the wheels there as well. And everything else is pretty straightforward. So 
the fun is about to begin. Enough about all the high quality components. Let's go for a quick spin and see how this kitty purrs. So get behind the wheel of this Jaguar F-Pace crossover. This is a breath of fresh air from Jaguar. Actually, you know, they've always had a reputation of being uh, slightly unreliable and in a strong need of a backyard mechanic to sit in the back seat of your car. Now we're driving along here and this thing feels very, very tight. We're on some very crusty roads and this vehicle seems like it's definitely well bolted together and bolted and screwed and glued and it's not really, there's no noises or rattles. I would say the model we're in here, obviously as mentioned before, we're in the 30T. So there's a 2530T, then there's also a diesel version, there's a supercharged V6, and there is the new SVR, which is absolutely flamboyant with the sounds and the acceleration. But this one here is the not quite the bottom of the barrel. This is the 30T that we're driving in today, and it produces about 300 horsepower technically just under. It's about 296 horsepower and about 295 pound-feet of torque from a two-liter four-cylinder turbo engine. Now that's a little more power for the size of engine than most of its competitors, which makes it quite impressive. On acceleration, it definitely has enough get up and go to make things lively and interesting. Now it's not going to blow your doors off. I would say the best bang for buck and value comes with the supercharged V6 because you're not going to spend um, nearly as much as you would with the SVR, but you'll definitely get a little more shiny performance than you would get in the Turbo Fours. But this isn't bad for a vehicle that just zingy, zippy around. Its functionality is there. You can pick up the little kids from school, or the you know the soccer moms can buzz around and do all their errands. And again, this thing seems to be gobbling up these ugly roads. These disgusting roads are all just beat up and tattered, full of full of holes and gaps and cracks tar patches so it's very very well put together there's no doubt about it and what's also nice not only does it have the eight-speed automatic transmission it's also shiftable here too if you look at the paddle shifters on the steering wheel you've got the plus and minus right here so you can pull the gears if you want down here on the shifter lever here you can actually adjust from drive mode which it just does its own thing you push down and turn it over to sport now what that does is it essentially holds the gears longer and allows you to pull gears and actually gives you the full experience now another thing I've noticed, the vehicle itself is quite quiet. The majority of the noise you get comes from the wheels. This one's actually right now riding on some 20 inch winter rubbers, which makes the ride a little taut. You can actually ramp up to larger wheel diameter as well and smaller profile, which of course would, you know, would hurt the drive quality, but certainly would give the better look and certainly the better performance. But as it stands, this vehicle definitely has a sharp turn in and handles very much like a sports car. It's it actually doesn't feel wallowy. What I found is driving along on the highway, I often found that the car feels, if anything, at the very least, a little darty. Almost where the front end is just very responsive, almost over responsive, if you will, in the handling department. Definitely in tune with what you would expect from a sports car, not so much from an SUV. But this car does drive very, very well. Now it is a little rigid, but I'd say it's in, in line with anything that you would kind of drive from the BMW world, particularly the X3s. Um, I, come to mind, driving this feels not too unlike an X3. Now this doesn't have as much power as the M X3 M40i. You'd have to go up to probably a supercharged V6 for that one in terms of acceleration performance, but the overall feel of the car isn't too far from what you get from an X3. So it's very, very good in that sense. Now. The overall driving experience is great in this. It's got pretty good get up and go even with the four cylinder engine. So it handles the curves really nice is as we enter into a corner here with this beautiful little F pace, it actually does a great job of carving through the corners here effortlessly and essentially well planted. So I have to say the F-Pace is no longer that great little alternative. If you're looking for a sporty European SUV or crossover vehicle, the F-Pace, let me remind you, is, is actually part of the new Tata Motors. And I have to speak from experience as an F-Type owner myself, the fit and finish and the quality of the modern day Jaguars is far better than it's ever been. And I've never felt the need that I had to have a mechanic in my back seat as I go for a drive. So this car is no longer the alternative, it is actually mainstream. They're becoming very popular and it's actually Jaguar's best selling vehicle right now on the market. And there's good reason for it. The way these things handle, like a sports car, they accelerate, they provide any type of performance you're looking for depending on your budget. 
you can get into an F Pace that can satisfy your particular needs. Great performance, quiet ride, brisk acceleration, and not necessarily there to break your bank. From one of the finest luxury brands on the market today, they do provide a very value added vehicle right here in the F Pace. And with all of that said, everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Be sure to click on that video. That's the Jaguar XE, which I recently test drove as well. Great alternative as well. Those are great little cars. Unfortunately, they are now being discontinued, so get one while you can because they're a lot better than you would think. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. So today we're going to be talking about the Jag F-Pace. <laughs> are you filming right now? Yeah. You silly girl. Hey guys, welcome back to Exotic Car Play Place. Today we're going to be talking about the Jag F-Pace. Stay tuned. <laughs> I know it's hard when you